We're here with Teacher Amita from Summer Academy Subang Jaya and we're having such a great time right now. <laughs> so many fun kids and uh, the teachers are great. Now Teacher Amita is the principal of this branch of Summer Academy yes. Kindergarten. Now how long have you been the principal here? Um, I've been the principal for probably about five years now, okay. but I've been working in this branch for 12 years now. Oh, wow. Yeah, so I started off as a teacher and then um, probably about six years after that, then I became a principal. Right, you rose up through the ranks. Yeah, yeah that's right. <laughs> from an intern actually, from the intern wow. to an assistant teacher to a teacher and then to a principal. Oh, wow. <laughs> but what got you interested in the early childhood education teacher? Um, because actually I was, um, I did my degree in accounting and finance and then I worked in uh, the accounting field, the corporate world for about six years. But all along I kind of knew that my calling was to work with children. Mm. So probably I think I was in my uh, sort of mid-twenties when I decided that if I wanted to really pursue my passion, I'll have to make the change. So then I went back to uni again and did my diploma and my degree in early childhood. And then I, then I started here as an intern and then I stayed on. So yeah. you, you took a degree and then you did another degree. <laughs> yeah. Wow, yeah. okay. So what, what, but why do you know that is your calling? Have you always wanted to be a teacher from a young Not age? Not really, no. I never really thought about it in that sense. But I loved being with kids. Maybe because I felt I was a child myself <laughs> all along. And then, you know, um, at that time when I first finished, um, when I started uni, there wasn't really uh, the option of early childhood education. But as we went along throughout, I really felt like, you know, it's always fun when I work with kids. And I wanted to do something where I could make a difference with people. So somehow in, in the line that I was working previously, I didn't feel that connection so much. So then, um, and then I just sort of, sort of thought about it, what would make me the happiest and as it working with, being with kids, mm. so yeah. I mean, we know, we all know being a teacher is tough, but being yeah. a kindergarten teacher, <laughs> how much tougher is that? Yeah, that's why I, I always think being a kindergarten teacher is not for the faint heart. <laughs> but although, although a lot of people have a misconception that uh, anyone can be a kindergarten teacher because they think it's, there's not so much of things involved, you know, teaching young kids. Anyone can teach young kids. Mm. But that's, that's, a, that's a totally wrong conception because you, first of all, you need to have the heart, the passion, and to know how children develop and then you tr through child development you know what's the best way and you know how to teach children if there's one key characteristic to be a kindergarten teacher what would it be i i would still say having the passion to teach right and and having patience <laughs> I, was thinking, I was about to get to that one actually yeah, 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 yeah. yeah passion and patience would be the first two and then there's lots of other things yeah. um you know uh being uh, uh, having, the, having the ability to adapt because one thing I've learned along the way is that every child is different mm. so the way you deal with one child is never the same with another so you've got to you have to be able to um, try and if it doesn't work to try again try different different ways till you actually find the way and then and then I think a real passionate early child teacher or educator would would celebrate every little step that the child makes, every little milestone or every little um, something that they're able to achieve. Mm. And then when you get that feeling like, you know, yeah, he got it and you celebrate that moment, that's when you know, yeah, you're actually meant to be. That's a, your job satisfaction. <laughs> satisfaction right. That's yeah. your KPI. Correct. Correct. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Yeah. Now we all know the first five years of a child's life is like yeah. their formative years, yes, right? Yeah. What's the most important thing to impart to a child in a kindergarten? Uh, I think to believe that you can do, you can do it, um, to, uh, that it's okay to make mistakes and to try again. Um, a lot of times I think we, over the years, I find that kids have that thing where uh, kids are afraid or maybe not so confident in some ways. But a lot of time, it's because they're not allowed to make mistakes. But I think that's one thing that I would want my, my, the kids under my care to, do, to, be, to not to be afraid to make mistakes and learn from it and then do, just, just go on. And the other thing is just basically to know that learning is a joyful thing. So I want them to leave Summer Academy with a feeling that uh, learning is fun and it's joyful and they carry that joy of learning throughout wherever they go. Nice. Now you've been here for 12 years, right? Yeah. You were saying from an intern and yeah. now a principal. Yeah. Can you share with us a story of maybe a child who, who came in, yeah. you know, shy yeah. and, and cry, crying every day yeah. and then now yeah. she spread her wing or he or she has spread her wing yeah, and I, yeah, flown away. I think there's so many, so many little stories like that. Um, I, but I still remember my first year. I'll never forget that one child who, she, she is a little girl, she was four, and she came in, she was really, really quiet. 
um, she used to uh, bite her clothes because whenever we used to like you know get her to talk and all that she used to be so afraid to open up and over a period of six months seven months close to a year it took for her to actually come out and be herself and then to actually stand up on stage uh, oh. to show her work and then to be part of a concert and to do it in front of an audience yeah that was amazing so I had tears in my eyes <laughs> That's yeah and then I think every year every year I have this little problem when because uh, Summer Academy, we have a concert every year, at the end of every year. So just before the kids graduate, so the principals, we will say something and you know to the to the graduating students. And every time I I'm on, on stage and I'm talking to them, I will be shaking because there's so much of emotions that's going in through me because I've seen them from three to six and it's just yeah, just seeing them how they've progressed and how they're now smiling, enjoying themselves. Yeah, it always it always gives me teary eyed. <laughs> I think I'm a very emotional principal. <laughs> but you've got to feel really proud of them yeah. at the end of the year you see them. But how does it feel where you're like, wow, I've nurtured these kids from this level and then now they can fly like that's it. <laughs> yeah. And then the next year, boom, another, another group another of three of them. Like, wow, the, the work starts <laughs> again. Yeah, yeah. yeah and I, I guess maybe because uh, we don't, sometimes I don't look at it in that way so much. I just take a day at a time. Mm. And then before you know it, my God, four years has passed, you know, and there's so much they've achieved. And, right. And so yeah, and because every day coming to work is a fun and enjoyable thing mm. that it's so it just you just kind of go with the flow. And right. What's your day to day schedule like? Um, yeah, so basically because I have two kids of my own, so my day starts a little earlier. So wake up really early, probably about six and then get, get ready. I'm here in school by 730. So 7.30 to 8 is getting the school ready and uh, the teachers come in. Now with the uh, post-MCO, there's a lot more to do, like, you know, sanitizing, getting everything all cleaned up and all. So 8 o'clock is when kids start to come in. Right. And when kids start to come in and then um, it just from there, it just kind of goes on because I also teach. Right. So um, the first part of the morning is greeting the kids, getting them in, uh, just checking everything's okay, you know, food's done, teachers are in, kids are in, and then at 9 o'clock I start my classes. So I assist the classes as well. So from 9 to 12.30 I'm normally in, a cl in the classrooms, and 12.30 is when I do the other principles of administrative. administrative I saw a signage outside that said that they have, you have the after class. The daycare. The daycare. Yeah. Right. And it ends at 7.30. I just did the math in my head. 6.30. 6.30. I did the math in my head. You, yeah. You're here Yeah. So sometimes. Hours? What? Yeah, correct, right. And uh, sometimes I do take a break because I have the luxury that I live nearby. Right. So I go for a, for a while and then I'll be back in the okay. later part of the day. It's a long day. Yeah, it's a long day. <laughs> wow. But is and, it more and, difficult to be a principal or be a teacher? Uh, because I think I enjoy being a teacher. I loved being a teacher even from the beginning. So I'm, I'm always happy at 9 to 12.30. I'm the happiest at 9 to 12.30. Right, right, okay. And then when, after 12.30 is when I, okay, okay, time to get serious now. <laughs> but yeah, my most enjoyable part of the day is when I'm with the kids. Right. Nice. That's a connection with yeah, them. Right? Connection yeah, connection with them. And you also have to have a connection with all your teachers yeah, as well as a principal, right? right? Yes, so yes. tell us about Teacher Carol. Right. Uh, teacher Kara is one amazing teacher that we have. I mean, every teacher in our school has their own uh, special special thing about them, and Teacher Kara is one of them. Uh, she's she's someone that's uh, always always ready to try out anything. Uh, whenever we have an idea, like a new idea, she'll be the first person to actually say, right. "Come on, let's try. It. Let's just do it." You know. And sometimes there'll be difficult days that I go through, but she's always there to sort of pump me up and say. You know, we've got this kind of thing. So she's got that uh, uh, that sort of positive attitude about her. She's creative. She comes out with like the craziest ideas. Sometimes she'll come she, at you know eight nine o'clock at night. She'll just text me and she'll tell me I've got this idea. Do you think I can do it? And in my heart, for a second, I'm thinking, how are we going to pull this through? Or how, you know? But then I, I have the trust in her that I know she can pull it through and she will. But she'll text you. She'll text me. Usually when people get texts from the boss, you're like, oh yeah. no. <laughs> but then do the, the, the staff yeah. texting the boss. Yeah, yeah. She's always constantly thinking of ideas oh. and uh, uh, what, do, what we can do with the kids. The kids love her. I think you, you guys have seen it in the classroom. Yeah. yeah, the kids love her. She's got a lot of energy. She's fun. She's loud, <laughs> but in a positive way. Loud That's in a what good you way. need, actually. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, thought yeah, I was yeah. loud, but I, I was drowned out by yeah, the yeah. children in yeah. the class. Yeah, yeah. But um, why do you think she deserves this break? Has she gone above and beyond uh, for her work? Yeah, 
Yeah, definitely. Yeah, because um, there's always when she will like you know you give her a set of things to do, but she'll come back with something else and something else. Says, let's try this and let's try that. So she's always constantly thinking of the best of the child. The other thing is that um, even if you see outside, we have a board that comes up with, to celebrate moments of the children and as well as teachers. So even that's her something that she decided let's do that for the kids. So she's always thinking of the well-being of the kids. It's always in her mind. Um, and uh, she actually stays in Sriramban. Yeah. So, so she comes all the way from Sriramban. I think for that, from to, to be able to come to from Sriramban to Subang every day for the past what three years, four years, it's already something to say that you know she's so passionate and in it to very dedicated. for the kids. Very dedicated. Yeah. And she also knows her pop culture. I heard. Everybody keeps telling me about the Wakanda Forever. Like <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah, right? yeah. She's a she's a big um, Avengers fan and all that. Yeah. So she always try to connect and see what is it that the kids love yeah. and try to connect their interests into her lessons. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess that's what makes the kids um, learn so much more. Right. And uh, she's got, uh, I think, her own personal journey. And so because of that, I think she deserves this this moment to just relax and enjoy. Yeah. <laughs> That's nice, right? <laughs> now, um, can, can you share with us a story of how she actually went above and beyond? Maybe for you personally or for one of her children, maybe? Mm, yeah, I would, I would think like she was probably the one of the first teachers that actually um, taught me that uh, when, when sometimes when you think about what are the kids' interests, you know, so sometimes we bring it, we bring it really down to children's level. But she was, she's one that said, you know, let's try something more. So the first thing that she did was when she came and told me that uh, she noticed that the kids, they love, somehow or other, this group of kids loved Coldplay. So then she said, let's have a Coldplay week, you know. The band Coldplay. The band Coldplay, oh, yeah. Wow. And okay. these are like, we're talking about, this was probably about two years ago and they're like five, six year olds. And I'm thinking, are you sure these kids, you know, no Coldplay first of all? <laughs> and then yeah, but then the thing is because I think uh, the kids are influenced by their parents' choice right, of music, right, right. right? So then she uh, she actually uh, came up with uh, a, a range of lesson plans and to introduce Coldplay into the classroom. Oh wow! So oh. the kids like you know, uh, there's reading, there's writing, there's uh, performance, and so she did. Um, she chose the song Magic from Coldplay, mm. and she got the kids to actually do a magic show. For so you know, so variety of things, and that's when I felt, wow, you know, I wouldn't have never thought of it to that extent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so she really puts her heart and soul in whatever she, she plans for the kids. That's brilliant. <laughs> and just just one thing. There's just so many things that I just can't think of at the moment. But right. yeah. <laughs> this is great. Wow. Hmm? Me as a teacher. All oh, right. Okay. Good. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> now, because uh, teacher Carol has been so great. Yeah. Going above and beyond, and now you're you're you have, you're missing a teacher. Yeah, that's so right. So in steps yeah. Bell to be the substitute teacher. <laughs> yes. So we want you to be brutally <laughs> honest, okay, yeah. and grade Bell on her performance today. Yeah, I was very surprised, Bell. You did really good. Wow. Like um, it's quite. Um, I thought you know it'll be quite difficult for you to manage different kids just saying this and that and coming up with things, but you did really well. You managed to get your your story done. Were you nervous when you were telling the story? No, actually. Yeah, that's right, that's right. it just came out very naturally. Like so, it didn't feel like that. So and the and I and um, I think the greatest thing is to hear the feedback from the kids. Mm. So like we heard the kids say we want Teacher Bell to come here forever. Mm. So that's that's it. So tells you. Well done. So touched. So when <laughs> Bell But I had a very disruptive <laughs> student in class <laughs> half midway through. Yeah. Yeah. But but you saw the rest of the kids. You're just one of the Yeah. Rest yeah. Of the kids. yeah. <laughs> we I, have these kids every day. The thing is though, uh, when Bell retires from radio, yeah. would you hire Bell to be a full time staff here, you think? Ah, not bad. Yeah, I think I would consider. Yes, definitely you could try that out. Okay. And then um, and then see how, how it goes. But yeah, I think that's probably something you could think about. Actually, you know, I wanted to be a kindergarten teacher really? for a very long time. What? Yeah. Okay. But do I have to go get an early childhood education degree? Uh, it's always best. Um, I think because it's maybe probably not a compulsory thing, but I think when you start from learning about children and learning what... Um, 
the de their development stages and the milestones that they go through and the different techniques mm -hmm. and things like that it helps it helps you give you a, give you an idea but then when you actually come to work and you get the practical side of it so when you have both it's mm. that's it just completes the whole package what do you think i can improve on to become a better yeah. substitute teacher be better with the naughty kids <laughs> <laughs> um um like when when you're telling the stories and all that right when you stop and you get the kids to interact with yeah, you yeah. more to get more of the kids uh, reactions that oh. will be and then it's funny because sometimes you have a, as a teacher you have a plan but when you get the kids involved it kind of goes to a different way but at the but that's when you find that the kids learn the most because they are asking the questions and, and things that are, they are curious about Yeah. So, get, so to get, get them to get ask them more to questions. Ask questions, yeah. Ah. Get them to ask more questions, and then um, sometimes it's always good that we don't give them the answers. We get them to think for themselves and come up with all their, you know, interesting and outrageous right. answers. Well, thank you very much, uh, Teacher Amita, for having us here yeah. at Summer Academy Kindergarten today and having me as a substitute teacher. Uh, and uh, we had lots of fun, really. Yeah. And and I really have uh, have to tip my hats off to all of you here. Thank It's you very much. It's not an easy job. Yeah. I mean, if you think we talk for a living, yeah. teachers shout for a living. Yeah. <laughs> But you know what? I think all teachers are underappreciated, and I think you guys do a fantastic job. Thank you very much. Thank you really much. Um, thank you for giving us this experience as well, because it's an experience for us. But most importantly, I think it was an experience for the kids. So, because in Summer Academy, we always believe that we want uh, whatever that we do, we want them to have a great memory of learning. So, this is definitely one of the things that added on to their memories while they were here at Summer. So, yeah, thank you very much for choosing us. Thank you. Thank I'm you. sure they'll go back to their parents and say, you know, today we have a new <laughs> classmate named Hansel. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. And he is very funny. He keeps telling jokes, and he has a big stomach. <laughs> <laughs> But it's also guerrilla marketing because we want them like listeners from the young age. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you.